This video will show you how to connect the electronics and tidy the wiring. Begin with the end stops. You'll be applying one on each axis. Start by clipping nuts into each printed part. Notice that each nut has to face a certain direction. You can use a pair of regular pliers to lodge the nut into position. With the nuts in place, fasten two screws on each piece. Don't exaggerate the tightening or you may damage a component. There are two screws of different sizes, so consult the manual to know for certain which one goes where. Insert the final nut into position if you haven't already, and we now secure each end stop to the Hello B Prusa. Starting on the Y axis, note how the end stop has a very specific orientation. Before fastening, test it by sliding the table against the end stop lever as you see here. The end stop mustn't be all the way up against the printed part on the tip of the Y axis, as the linear bearing on the other side may strike the axis tip. Test to make sure this doesn't happen. If you are happy with the result, apply the screw. Don't tighten too hard or you may damage the piece. Next, the x-axis. Again take note of the exact orientation. Test it by sliding the extruder unit against the end stop lever, then fasten it. Finally the z-axis. Fasten it on as you see here. This one isn't testable as the screw above it will be calibrated later on. Here we attach the display. This is simply a question of screwing it on. We move on to the power supply. Like most components, this has to face in a certain direction. The top screw is straightforward. Remember to also apply the washer indicated in the manual. The bottom hole is a bit harder to access, but the holes on the frame are linear, so you can lightly fasten the screw, slide into position, then tighten firmly. Now we'll be threading some wiring coming out of the power unit. Start with the shorter cable that has an earth, neutral and live wire. Thread it through the bottom of the frame as you see here. Always be careful not to snag or fold the wiring. Then thread it through this orifice. Next thread the same wires through this printed piece. Link the connectors to the back of the switch making sure it's the right way up and that you plug each wire to the correct connector. The black wire is behind the switch, the blue is in the middle, the earth behind the power socket. Then gently slide the unit into the printed piece. Once it's clicked into place, slide the assemble set into the frame. It will only fit one way. Now simply screw the power switch to the frame. And now the all important motherboard. To prepare we'll be applying the screws and the printed spacers. Note they all have a specific location. Attach the motherboard to the frame using the nuts and washers indicated in the manual. This following step shows how we'll be placing the wiring coming out from beneath the build plate. The crucial point to keep in mind is to make sure the wire won't snag or be crushed when the plate and its structure are moving. You mustn't stretch it and leave some slack since we'll be attaching it to the frame with cable ties here and here. At this point we'll be tying the remaining power supply cable, the Y-axis motor cable and one of the Z-axis motor cables to the frame. They must pass through this specific spot so the frame won't be crushing them once it's upright. Start by fastening the three cables on this end. Remember, the frame mustn't crush the wiring. Then link them to the center as you see here. Fasten with a cable tie and cut the tip. Finish this section by attaching the wiring at the point seen here. The next step is to connect the end stops to the motherboard. You'll be using the cables indicated in the manual. A very important first step is to mark on both ends of each cable which end stop it will connect to. Be thorough and don't mix them up. You'll end up with X on both ends of one cable, Y on both ends of another, and Z on both ends of the third. For the time being we'll be connecting one end of these cables to the end stops. Note that only one of the cable connectors fits the end stop. Connect each cable to the correct axis, doing this firmly but gently. 
Back to the motherboard. This step is simply screwing in the two wire ends that come out of the build plate. Note that on the motherboard you can see HBED written upside down indicating where the wire screw in. You can attach either wire to any one of the two connector terminals since neither wire has polarity. Simply unscrew to open, screw in to lodge each wire in place. You may have noticed there's still a single connector from the build plate to be plugged in. It's inserted into the centre slot of these three terminals. Always keep in mind that if you're not sure what goes where, consult the user manual. Our next step is to hook up the wires coming from the power supply and the Y and Z axis stepper motor cables. First, we thread the motor cables behind the motherboard as seen here. The power supply cables go round the back as you can see. You then connect the red and black wire in the correct terminals. Don't mix them up because one is positive and the other negative. Then you hook up the stepper motors to the slots on the side. Match up the cable labelled Z to the slots with the same letter next to it and plug it in. Do the same for the Y axis cable. Be gentle since these connectors fit in a particular orientation. Let's tidy up some cables. Begin with the Y axis end stop cable. Pass it behind the Z axis stepper motor close by and under the frame, then tie it to the frame at the point shown. Further on, tie it to the cable coming out of the Z axis motor nearby. Now tie the Z and Y axis end stop cables to the frame at this point. We now tie the X axis stepper motor cable and the X axis end stop cable together at the point shown here. Give the end stop cable a little slack and remember to never fold any of the cables. Fasten them both to the frame as shown, then fasten them together with a cable tie a bit further down. Bunch these two up with the remaining end stop cable and the Z axis stepper motor cable and insert them between the motherboard and the frame as seen here. Pay close attention to the user manual to connect the cables properly. The cables connect to the slots with the corresponding letters next to them. The X axis cables loop round from above and you plug the end stop cable into the top slot and the motor cable into the side slot with the X next to it. The loop is so the cables have some slack after fastening some fans on top of them later. At this point the only loose wiring should be that coming out of the extruder unit. Apply the cable casing around all the wiring, starting next to the extruder unit. With this done, tie it to the frame behind the display with enough slack to allow the cable to flex when the extruder unit moves about. Now you connect all the wires coming out of the cable housing. This is where all that labelling pays off, since now it's just a matter of connecting the right wire ends to the right terminals or slots. This process is too finicky and detailed to be properly shown on video. Read the user manual carefully since it offers a much better view. Take your time to make sure it's all done correctly. Up next, another pair of fans and their components. Always check if these are all facing the correct way. Place the printed part and threader screw and washer on one side, flip it all over and place a wash and nut on the other end of the screw and tighten. Then apply a nylock nut into the orifice as shown here keeping in mind the nut has a specific direction. Repeat for the other motor. To apply the fans you might need to move the x-axis. Rotate the flex couplings to do this. Remember, the couplings must always rotate simultaneously. Apply each fan by threading a screw through the frame at the points shown. You may have to brush aside some wiring for the fans to fit, which is why you had to have left some slack in the cables earlier. Remember these fans will hold in place wiring you slotted into the side earlier, so be careful not to snag anything. Connect the fan motor wiring to the correct terminals. See the manual for correct and detailed indications. Now just punch up the wires carefully and apply cable ties to attach them to the fans. You're nearly finished. Next step is connecting the display or control panel. It's simply plugging in these flat cables. 
Notice, however, that each end is slightly different. You have to plug them in so that the cables don't bend awkwardly. Simply plug the other end into the slot on the motherboard with the same designation. Apply the glass build plate surface with the binder clips. Note the glass has an orientation, so it will only fit between the screws of the heated bed in one direction only. Finally, check the power supply unit to make sure it's set for your country's voltage and place the fuse with the proper amperage inside the power switch. And you're done! Congratulations! Your Hellebi Prusa is fully assembled.